This is a guide on replacing a touch bar on a MacBook Pro 15 model number A1707. In order to change the touch bar, we will need to remove the display assembly, the bottom case, the keyboard, the touchpad. To make a long story short, we are only keeping the motherboard, the power button and the display. Everything else must go. Don't break a touch bar. For this repair, you will need the following tools. A Pentalob 1.2 screwdriver, a Torx 3 screwdriver, a Pentalob 0.8 screwdriver, a Torx 5 screwdriver, a plastic spudger, a Torx 7 screwdriver, and tweezers. To begin, shut down the computer. Flip the laptop over, and using a Pentalob 1.2 screwdriver, remove the six bottom cover screws. Two screws near the hinge are longer than the other four screws on the front edge. Pry open the front edge of the cover, unsnapping two mountings underneath using a plastic pick. Turn the laptop around and slide the cover away from the hinge. This is the replacement touch bar. In order to use it, we'll need to transfer the motherboard and the display assembly onto the new case, as well as the fingerprint sensor slash power button. Using a Torque 3 screwdriver, remove two right hinge cover screws. Remove the right hinge cover. Remove two more screws from the left hinge cover. Remove the left hinge cover. Remove two screws securing the touchpad connector shield. Remove the shield. Using a plastic spudger, disconnect the touchpad. Using a Torx 3 screwdriver, remove two screws holding the black plastic cable tensioner on the right. Remove two more screws holding the black plastic cable tensioner on the left. Remove two screws holding the video cable bracket. Remove the bracket. Remove two screws securing the video connector shield. Remove the shield. Using a plastic spudger, gently disconnect the video connector and bend it back. Using a Torx 5 screwdriver, remove four screws holding the LCD driver board. Using a Pentalope 0.8 screwdriver, begin removing screws holding the Wi-Fi antenna assembly on the right side. There are eight screws in total. Proceed on removing the other eight screws on the left side of the Wi-Fi antenna assembly. Using a plastic spudger, disconnect the three coaxial antenna connectors. Using a Torx 5 screwdriver, remove the antenna cabling grounding screw. Gently bend back the LCD driver circuit and using a plastic spudger, carefully pry up the antenna assembly from the center positioning slot and pull it away by about half an inch. Using a Torx 7 screwdriver, loosen the hinge screws, three on the right side and three more on the left. Open the display to a 90 degree angle and hang the display off the desk. Remove the three screws on the right hinge. Remove three more screws on the left hinge. Position the Wi-Fi antenna over the LCD driver circuit and carefully remove the display assembly off its hinges. Remove the Wi-Fi antenna. At this point, it's a good idea to disconnect the battery. Lift the black plastic cover over the battery control circuit. Using a plastic spudger, open the keyboard backlight connector and carefully pry off the Plex cable. Using a Torx 5 screwdriver, unscrew a white cap screw securing the main power leads. Pry up the power leads away from the battery control circuit. You can use the replacement part as a reference for all of the connectors that need to be undone the keyboard, the touchpad, the speakers, and the USB jacks. Using a Torx 3 screwdriver, remove two screws holding the keyboard connector shield. Remove the shield, pry open the connector. Remove two screws holding the headphone jack connector shield. Remove the shield, pry open the connector. Using a plastic pick, carefully pry open the right speaker connector then the left speaker connector. Using a Torx 3 screwdriver, remove a screw holding a small shield near the left hinge. Remove the shield, pry open the connector underneath. 
Using the same screwdriver, remove two screws holding another connector shield near the left speaker. Remove the shield, pry open the connector. Proceed on removing two more screws securing the right USB connector. Pry open the connector. Remove two screws securing the left USB connector. Pry open the connector. Now that all the connectors are disconnected from the motherboard, we can use a Torx 5 screwdriver to start removing the motherboard screws. The trick to keeping track of the screw positions is to lay the screws in the same pattern as they were installed on the computer on your desk. Remove the lower right corner screw, set it on the desk above. Remove the lower left corner screw, set it above. Remove the right mid screw. Remove the right upper screw. Remove the screw left of the right fan. Remove the left mid screw. Remove the left screw next to the left fan. Remove the upper left fan screw. Remove the center right screw next to the battery control circuit. Remove the final center left screw. The motherboard is still being held by a small flex cable connector. Peel the protective tape to expose the connector. Carefully open the connector counter lever using a plastic pick and pull out the ribbon cable. Separate the silicone gasket from the left fan and another one from the right fan. Proceed on removing the motherboard. Pry open the last tiny connector in the right bottom corner, remove the motherboard and set it above. Next, we need to transfer the fans and a few other things onto the new part. Using a Torx 3 screwdriver, remove four screws holding the right fan. Remove four more screws holding the left fan. Using a plastic pick, unlock the left fan connector counter lever. Unlock the right fan connector counter lever. Carefully remove the left fan, then the right fan. Using a Torx 3 screwdriver, remove two screws holding the left USB connector assembly. Pull out the USB connector assembly and set it aside. Remove two more screws holding the right USB connector assembly. Pull out the USB connector assembly and set it aside. The last part that needs to be transferred is the power button slash fingerprint sensor. Using a Torx 3 screwdriver, remove six screws from the button's back plate and remove the back plate. Peel back the black tape over the power button cable extension. It will need to be transferred onto the new part. Gently unfold the flex cable to the left and carefully unlock the connector counter lever underneath. Pull out the power button connector and thread it through to let the button drop out out the bottom. Set the button aside. Carefully pry off the power button cable extension and set it aside. Compare your original part to the new one, and if every component appears to be transferred, place the new part on the desk. Now we will be reassembling everything back together in a reverse order. Thread through the power button cable from the underneath. Replace the power button cable extension, and using tweezers, reconnect the power button to the extension. It may need to be repositioned to connect properly. Once the cable is fully inserted, stick the extension and the power button cables in their appropriate locations. They are mounted on adhesive. And using a plastic pick, lock the connector counter lever. Replace the power button back plate and secure it with six Torx 3 screws. Silver screws go in the corners connecting to body. Two more black screws go in the center connecting to the button itself. Fold back the cable extension to the left and fold over the protective tape. Replace the right USB connector assembly and secure it with two Torx 3 screws. Replace the left USB connector assembly and secure it with two Torx 3 screws. Replace the left fan by aligning its cables with a reciprocal connector. Slide in the cable and lock the connector counter lever. Replace the right fan by aligning its cable with the reciprocal connector. Slide on the cable and lock the connector's counter lever. Replace the silver Torx 3 screw in the upper hole of the left bottom corner of the left fan. 
replace three black torque screws in the appropriate holes on the left fan. Some of the holes are for the motherboard screws, so make sure to place the fan screws in the correct positions according to the video. Replace the silver Torx 3 screw in the upper hole of the right bottom corner of the right fan. Replace three black Torx 3 screws in the appropriate holes on the right fan. Some of the holes are for the motherboard screws, so make sure to place fan screws in the correct positions according to the video. Prepare the area for motherboard reinstallation. Bend out all the connectors on the perimeter and smoothen the fan connectors. Carefully lower the motherboard in position, making sure that every connector that goes over the board is not caught underneath it. Reconnect the power button in the bottom right corner. Replace the center left Torx 3 screw. Replace the center right Torx 3 screw. Replace the Torx 5 screw at the top of the left fan. Replace the mid left Torx 5 screw. Replace the Torx 5 screw at the bottom of the left fan. Replace the Torx 5 screw at the bottom left of the right fan. Replace the Torx 5 screw at the top of the right fan. Replace the screw at the bottom of the right fan and at the left bottom corner of the board. Replace the final Torx 5 screw at the right bottom corner of the board. Gently reconnect the right speaker connector. Reconnect the left speaker connector. Reconnect the connector at the bottom of the left speaker. Reconnect the left USB connector, then the right USB connector. Secure the left USB connector with two Torx 3 screws. Secure the right USB connector with two Torx 3 screws. Replace a connector shield over the connector at the bottom of the left speaker. Secure it with two Torx 3 screws. Reconnect the small ribbon cable to the left of the left fan and secure the connector's counter lever. Reconnect a small connector at the bottom left corner and cover it with the appropriate connector shield and secure it with one Torx 3 screw. Reconnect another connector at the bottom right corner and cover it with the appropriate connector shield and secure it with two Torx 3 screws. Reconnect a larger connector near the battery control circuit. Cover it with the appropriate connector shield and secure it with two Torx 3 screws. At this point, the original or a new display assembly can be reinstalled. Slide the main body to the edge of the table, bend out the LCD driver board and the cable tensioners towards the back side of the display assembly, and lower the display on its hinges. Replace two Torx 7 screws in the center hole of each hinge, but do not tighten it. Close the display assembly. Place the body on the table and using both hands ensure that all four corners of the body are flush with the corners of the display. Replace two Torx 7 screws in the left hinge. Replace two Torx 7 screws in the right hinge. Tighten each of the hinge screws well. Reposition the display cable tensioners in their respective spots and align the LCD driver board into position. Thread the Wi-Fi antenna assembly cables through. Put the assembly over the center positioning slot and press firmly to clip the assembly back in place. Reconnect the three coaxial antenna cables onto the mainboard. Secure the antenna cable and grounding pad with a Torx 3 screw. Replace the 8 pentalobe 0.8 screws on the left side of the Wi-Fi antenna assembly. Replace the other 8 pentalobe 0.8 screws on the right side of the Wi-Fi antenna assembly. Replace 4 Torx 5 screws securing the LCD driver board. Reconnect the video connector and secure it with 2 Torx 3 screws. Replace the video cable bracket and secure it with 2 Torx 3 screws. Secure the right cable tensioner with 2 Torx 3 screws. Secure the left cable tensioner with two Torx 3 screws. Replace the right hinge cover and secure it with two more screws. Replace the left hinge cover and secure it with another Torx 3 screws, two of them. Bend down the main power leads towards the battery control circuit and secure it with a wide cap Torx 5 screw. Carefully slide the little flex cable over the battery control circuit and into its connector. Lock the connector's counter lever. 
Replace the black plastic cover over the battery control circuit. Reconnect the touchpad connector and smooth down its flex cable. Replace the connector chute and secure it with two Torx 3 screws. Place the bottom cover a quarter inch above the hinge edge and slide it in place. Snap in the two mid mounting points underneath. Replace the two longer Pentlow 1.2 screws near the hinge, one on the left bottom corner, the other on the right. Replace the four Pentlow 1.2 screws on the front edge. Flip the laptop over, open it up and cross your fingers, toes, eyes and press the power button. Looks like the new battery isn't charged, but it's a good sign that the display turned on to tell us that. Reconnect the power and at this point the laptop should boot up on its own. And looks like the new touch bar is working and we're done.